Hello, this is Pastor Mike Jones with the Life Together in Christ devotion. And today we're going to be looking at Romans chapter 7, verses 7 through 13. And uh, if you would like to turn with that uh, to that chapter with me, feel free to do that. Romans chapter 7, verses 7 through 13. And let's open with prayer before we start. Lord, we pray that as we look at your word today, that you would speak truth into each of our hearts, Lord. That you would reveal to us uh, the danger and power of sin, but also, Lord, that you would reveal to us uh, the freedom that we can have from sin. And Lord, we just thank you for your Holy Spirit that gives us understanding and wisdom and speaks to our heart. Amen. So in yesterday's uh, lesson, in the first part of Rome. Romans chapter 7, we saw that being bound by the law was a bad thing. <clears throat> because if we were bound by the law, the law states the only way that we can uh, save ourselves is to be perfect uh, without sin. And that's impossible for us as human beings because we have a sinful nature. And so does that mean uh, that the law is bad or is sinful? Well, let's take a look at what our scripture says today. Romans chapter 7, verse 7 and following. What shall we say then? Is the law sinful? Certainly not. Nevertheless, I would not have known what sin was had it not been for the law. For I would not have known what coveting really was if the law had not said you shall not covet. And to covet is to desire uh, what someone else has, to want it for your own. But sin, seizing the opportunity afforded by the commandment, produced in me every kind of coveting. For apart from the law, sin was dead. Once I was alive apart from the law, but when the camp commandment came, sin sprang to life, and I died. So what Paul is saying here is uh, the commandment, uh, the commandments in the Bible, what the Bible says about right and wrong, teaches us what is sinful and what is good. And Paul says before he knew the law, before he knew God's commandments or what was right and wrong, he was alive because there was no sense of guilt, no sense of condemnation. Because whatever he did, uh, he had no idea that what he was doing could be right or wrong. But once he became aware of the word of God, and it pointed out to him what sin was, uh, then um, he died. It seemed as though sin sprang to life. The law made him aware of all the areas of his life that were sinful. And... There is an amazing truth. The closer we draw to God and the more we understand of God's word, the more we see our sin and our own wretchedness. And so he says that sin sprang to life and I died. And it's not that he had not already been sinning. It's that he became now aware of that sin. And so he goes on to say in verse 10, I found that the very commandment that was intended to bring life actually brought death. So God's commandments were meant for good in our lives, to lead us into uh, living in the right way uh, so that we could enjoy a more fulfilling life. And what he's saying is those commandments which were intended for good actually revealed to him the sin in his life and separated him from God or brought death. And he goes on in verse 11, For sin, seizing the opportunity afforded by the commandment, deceived me, and through the commandment put me to death. So then the law is holy, and the commandment is holy, righteous and good. So Paul is saying here, it's not God's commandments or what he spoke in the scriptures about right and wrong that is evil. He says that is good. The law is good. It points out our sin and it gives us instruction how to live a fulfilling life. But he says what is bad, what is evil, is sin itself, that sin nature in us. And he goes on in verse 13, Did that which is good, the law then, become death to me? By no means. Nevertheless, in order that sin might be recognized as sin, 
It used what is good, the law, to bring about my death so that through the commandment, sin might become utterly sinful. And so the law is a good thing. It points out our sin in our lives. Uh, That sin makes us see our separation from God and others when we sin against them. And the law helps us judge sin as evil, as utterly sinful because of what it does to us in separating us from God and separating us from people. And so um, the law is a good thing. Reading scripture and becoming aware and more aware of our own sinfulness and what is right and good and righteous and holy is a good thing. Now the good news is, even though we have a sinful nature, we also have the Spirit of God dwelling within us. And the Spirit of God is stronger than our sinful nature. The Spirit of God can empower each one of us to live according to the law, to live in doing the right things that will bring us fulfilling life. And so today, brothers and sisters, I encourage you that as you become aware of sin in your life, that you would remain connected to God, remain connected to Christ as he is the vine and you are the branch, that you would remain connected to Christ in prayer and in time of devotion and worship and attending church, and that as you remain connected to Christ, that the Spirit of God will live and dwell within you and empower you to raise above sin in your life and to live a life that is fulfilling and rich today. God loves you, and I love you, and he gives you your spirit today, his spirit today to empower you to live into that fulfilling life. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit that empowers each one of us. And Lord, as we become more aware of sin in our own lives, we pray, Lord, that you would convict us of that sin. You would make us aware, Lord, that through your Holy Spirit, you would empower us to live not according to sin, but according to the good and righteous law that you give us. Lord, that through your spirit, we would be able to follow your commandments so that each of us would experience a more fulfilling life today. In your name we pray. Amen.